part is to work out the unit vector okay because what we're trying to do is we're going to use the force vector definition to predict where the forces are or the magnitude of the forces within the structure so that's basically what we're going to do it all right so this is the formula that's important so in terms of the force vector in terms of the definition so that that is equal to the magnitude of the force multiplied by what's called the unit vector so this is a very important equation that we do require and that's basically what I'm going to be using to deduce the measure of the forces or the reactions within um, the struts. Okay, so before we do that, we need to work out what the unit vector is. And once we've done that, then we can use the equations of equilibrium to figure out what the non forces are within this force system. Okay, so the next part is working out. unit vectors okay and one thing I do need to point out is this it's very important that once you've worked out the unit vector you double check in terms of what the magnitude of the unit vector is to ensure that it gives you unity if it doesn't give you unity then you've gone wrong somewhere okay so that's a good thing to to check all right, so we're going to work out the unit vector for position vector AB. So position vector AB, we work that out to be, so where's my information? So that was 8i plus 2j minus... 12 k m all right so to work out the unit vector so the unit vector we're going to call that lambda a b this is going to equal to the position vector divided by the magnitude of the position vector okay so this is basically the equation that we're going to be using so let's look at the magnitude so the magnitude of rho AB is equal to square root of 8 squared plus 2 squared plus into bracket minus 12 squared. The square root of all of that will give us the magnitude of the position vector. All right. So let's just put that in our handy calculator so we have 8 squared plus 2 squared plus 12 squared all into bracket square root and that gives a value of 14.56 for the purposes of accuracy, any time that um, you're computing values leading to the final result, I tend to advise students just to keep it to four decimal places. Then when you get your final result, then you can just um, wrap it up to two decimal places. Okay, so it's more or less up to you, but I tend to prefer computing in four decimal places. All right, so therefore, the unit vector, lambda AB, will be equal to... 8i plus 2j minus 12k all over its magnitude. So that is 
five, six, zero, two. Okay. So we can further break that down to isolate each component of the vector to its magnitude and then simplify and you know, note down the final result. So this would be equal to eight over 14.562 i plus 2 over 14.502 quantify that fraction as j minus Twelve over fourteen point five six not two. Okay, and don't forget that the uh, um, what we call it, um, the units will cancel out. So uh, the unit vector is dimensionless. All right. Okay, so we've got that there. So this would then give lambda a b to be, so let's bring our calculators. So 8 divided by 14.5602, that's equal to 0 0.5494i plus 2 divided by 14.5602. That's equal to 0 0.1374j minus 12 divided by 14.5602. And that gives 0 0.8244. Um, let's make that 2k. All right. So this is the unit vector with respect to strut AB. So that's that. So as I stated, to ensure that you're on the right side, double check by working out the magnitude of the unit vector. And if you work it out and you've done this correctly, you should get approximately 1. Okay. So let's have a go at doing this. So this is 0 0.5494 squared plus 0 0.1374 squared plus 0 0.8242 squared bracket close square root. And there you have it. So that's approximately one, okay? So we're good. So we'll use the same methodology to work out the, um, the unit vector for the rest of the supports, all right? So we're going to look at um, support, so unit vector, and we're looking at support two, okay? So we worked out the position vector. So this is AC to B. So that was naught I plus five J minus 12 K. All right, so we did that. So again, to work out the unit vector, so that therefore the unit vector so as I said lambda AC that'll be equal to the position vector AC divided by X magnitude okay so that's essentially what we need to do so magnitude Straighten that. I don't know why I like 
it's having it selected so magnitude of row AC okay and that'll be equal to the square root of not squared plus five squared plus minus twelve squared okay and this will give us so let's bring our handy calculator again so this would be five squared plus twelve squared square root and that gives us thirteen so therefore lambda AC that's equal to not I plus 5J minus 12K all over the magnitude, which is 13. So we can isolate each component of the vector with respect to its magnitude. So naught over 13 I plus 5 over 13 J minus 12 over 13 K. And this will give us naught I plus 5 divided by 13. So that will be 0 0.3846J minus 12 divided by 13. And that is equal to 0 0.9234. All right, so we worked out the unit vector for support two. So let's do likewise for support three. So position vector. And again, you can work ahead of me if you want to. So position vector, row AD. That was worked out to be, so where did I work it out? Here we go. So I worked it out to be minus 2.5i. Let's not forget the i. Plus 0j minus 12k. All right, so we got that. Okay, cool. So that's minus 2.5j um, i plus, that should be i. Plus naught j minus 12k. So therefore, the position vector, oh, the unit vector, sorry. So that is lambda ad, that's equal to its position vector divided by its magnitude. Okay, so we're still using the same methodology. So the magnitude so let's call that rho AD is equal to the square root of minus 2.5 squared plus minus 12 squared and that's equal to so again there's always that possibility of making errors but that doesn't prevent you from double checking your work so make sure that you sequence your work 
in such a manner that you can always do an audit to double check where you've made a mistake. Okay, it's very easy to make a mistake. Squared root of that, and that gives a value of 12.257. Seven. Okay. So therefore, the unit vector lambda AD is equal to minus 2.5i plus 0j minus 12k all over its magnitude 12.2577. So let's simplify that by isolating each component of the vector to its magnitude. So this would be minus 2.5 over 12.2577 i plus 0j minus 12 over 12.2577. I didn't bother to do the J because that's not, so it's not anyway. So this will be equal to, so let's bring our trusty calculator. So 2.5 divided by 12.2577. So that would be minus, so again, the negatives, the positive, you need to be careful. 0 0.2, not hmm, 4. I plus notch j minus 12 divided by 12.2577 and that gives us um, 979k so that's not not 0.97k all right so there we have it. So we've worked out the position vector by identifying the coordinate points and working the position vector with respect to point A to point B. So uh, we've done that. Then we've worked out the unit vectors. So we've done that. So the next part is to then define the equations in terms of the force vector for each vector component and then we use the equation of equilibrium to figure out what is or what are these forces these unknown forces so going back to um i'm not sure if we've talked about this my brace of that but in terms of my students i think i've talked about this so the equations of equilibrium is just basically the sum of the forces in x is equal to zero the sum of the forces in y is equal to zero the sum of the forces in um, z is equal to zero and then the sum of moments in respect to the various planes equal to zero so that's basically what we're going to be using um, in this respect and because we've gone like a 3d concurrent force system it makes it very easy for us to ignore uh, the moment equation